When it is convenient to the atheist argument, there's a great deal of discussion in the community about the church having been used as a tool, not just the church, Abrahamic faith, period, having been used as a tool of the oppression of Africans and African Americans. Uh, the most common example cited is uh, slavery, when masters would not allow African people to read or write, but were forced to be converted to Christianity. We're told all the justifications and the social justifications of why the Bible legitimizes slavery, why it's a viable option, how a good slave is obedient to the master to glorify the Lord, and how the slave should put up and shut up because his or her reward is in heaven. Not frequently enough, there is also a discussion in the atheist community about uh, the modern church, particularly the African American church, being used as a tool of oppression for uh, keeping African American people in line and keeping them superstitious uh, and ignorant. For instance, the billboards that are going up in African American communities that uh, speak of abortion is genocide. I think there's some in Chicago and elsewhere. In primarily black communities. So that African Americans will identify abortion as something satanic and evil and will identify themselves as fundamentalist Christians as being anti-abortion. It's a propaganda campaign. Uh, there's not enough discussion in the atheism community about African Americans, about the impact of re religion on African Americans. Uh, the prison system is racist. Uh, African Americans are far outnumber uh, their per capita population in general in being incarcerated. And they are being indoctrinated both with fundamentalist Christianity and with Islam. So occasionally when it suits the atheist debate that conversation comes up. Now I'm going to tell you about a kid 15 years old African-American kid. I recently found out about this kid through a social networking site. For uh, the winter holidays his fundamentalist mother fundamentalist Christian born again in the African American church bought him a book. Kid's really proud of getting this book and he goes on to a uh, atheist uh, social networking site and posts a picture of himself holding his Christmas presents because it's a, do you remember what a relief it would have been if your parents had loved you and accepted you when you came out to them as an atheist instead of rejecting you and telling you you're satanic and uh, disowning you from the family for those of us who've had that happen and I think all of us know somebody who has had that happen being socially rejected becoming an instant social pariah uh, what about employment what about housing you know the discrimination that happens when a person reveals themselves to be an atheist especially in a tight-knit and fundamentalist community. So the kid was really proud that his mother had made such a gesture. And he posted a picture of himself with these materials and the white men in the group piled on him. They posted racist cartoons they made jokes about lynching they graphically described how they would physically attack his body they made a joke that uh, Blood is a good lubricant to get the knife in 
or the broom handle up his ass. It's a 15-year-old boy. And then they turned around and said, well, if the kid didn't want to be insulted for his race, he shouldn't have shown his face when showing the book because what was important was the book, not his face, and how egotistical African Americans are that they think they have to show themselves. That when, well, Obviously, that what's important is the book. Not realizing that dozens of these white men had, boys, men, had posted pictures of themselves wait, 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 holding up the books they got for over the winter holidays. The 15-year-old kid. An African-American atheist protested about this on a couple of social forums and was either ignored by the general atheist community or got a few poo-poos. You're making a big deal out of nothing. It's just kids will be kids. They were just goofing around. Or the boy brought it on himself. Basically, the issue was ignored as uh, silly and trivial. None of that, what I just told you, just happened. It was a girl. She was 15. She is 15. Her mother bought her a copy of Carl Sagan's Demon Haunted World. And she posted a picture of herself holding the book. And, yeah, they put up the cartoons. They mocked her. They said, you know, like, girls are so egotistical. The men did sh hold up pictures of themselves holding books. They did post those. They said if she didn't want to be, uh, basically, they didn't say sexually harassed, but if she didn't want to hear these jokes about rape, about how she's full of orifices they could put their penises in. She should not have posted her picture. She should wear a burqa, a hijab. To post on an atheist website. They posted cartoons about kidnapping her and raping her. They posted comments about blood being a good lubricant, about tears being a good lubricant. Rape jokes, violent sexual fantasies, and Skeptic has done an article about it. I'll try to remember to put it in the low bar with pictures and with screen caps of the comments. <coughs> and nobody's taking it seriously because it's Skeptic. She's afraid to get in an elevator with a man. I suspect that the hatred of women is just self-hatred that men hate themselves there's a lot of evidence for what I'm about to say I mean for what I'm saying circumcision an attempt to reduce sensation during sexual activity the language they use for instance one of the worst insults you can use is Walk sucker. Now let's look at that. A man who has pleasure by oral sex should hate the person giving him the pleasure. Any, it's like anybody who would have sex with me, a man, is beneath contempt. That's pure self-hatred. But they oppress us around it. They oppress women. And, and queers around this. They blame us for their sexual feelings. Because they, through indoctrination of thousands of years of male religions, they're supposed to hate sex and sexuality. And they only see us as sexual beings or sexual objects. Not all men don't go there. 
This is just a theory. I'm not good at rhetorical stuff. Don't go there. Don't pick me apart and call me this and that. Let me think. Let me think, God damn it. I'm not allowed to have a voice and I'm not allowed to think. And I'm taking a chance and I'm taking a risk. Just listen. Just let me work this out. I'm not a theoretician or a politician. I'm just a woman who's been thinking about stuff. I think there's a lot of man hatred that goes into sexism and homophobia. I think men have been conditioned to hate, hate themselves. The only two emotions they're allowed to have in Western culture are anger and lust. And they put themselves down for that too. Let alone, God, boys don't cry. And, and then, of course, there's the words they use against us. You know those two words I hate, the C word and the T word. They'll call another man female genitalia, but a really ugly slur for it that implies that it's ugly, it's diseased, it's repulsive, and it's stupid. Dude, when you call another man that word, you're talking about my body. You're talking about your mother's body. Tell me about how religion has forced us to pervert our sexuality. We don't have a clue who we really are as sexual beings anymore. We're probably a lot more like bonobos than like creatures that mate for life. We don't know. We don't know. We've been so repressed and restricted and we probably... Uh, selectively bred for these characteristics we don't know who we are sexually but I know what happened in that forum with those evil little boys ganging up on that young woman because she had the nerve to post a photograph of herself proudly holding up Carl Sagan's Demon haunted world. Do you see the irony in this? And be proud that her mother heard her and supported her enough to give her that book for Christmas present. Yeah, I had one of those Anne Rand jackasses come into my comment section one day and Oh, you're acting like a victim and something about the Scum Manifesto. You know, I was alive when the Scum Manifesto was written. I was around. God. You're so young. Your daddy wasn't even capable of getting an erection when I read that. You're not dealing with some somebody who's as ignorant as you are, boy. Did I, do I say because I'm feminist that I subscribe to the Scum Manifesto? Would I, would you say about me if I were black that because I believe in civil rights that I advocate radical racial segregation and death to white people? Of course not! You wonder why people of color and people with disabilities and low-income people, queer people, women, you wonder why we won't participate? And the most radical, the most progressive atheism there is, the most fundamental is to understand the impact of superstition on our psychology and our sexuality and how we socialize. Feminism is an atheist issue. Correction. Atheism is a feminist issue. S screw it. I'm putting feminism at the center of this argument. You atheists can go off and play with yourselves. As a woman and a queer, I know how religion has been used as a tool of oppression firsthand. It's going on to this very day. 
I'm not supposed to have a voice, so I'm poo-pooed and dismissed because they see I don't have a penis between my legs. They think I don't know how to replace a lug nut on a car. I don't know the difference between a lug nut and a lug bolt. When I go ask for help to replace a lug bolt, oh, you must mean a lug nut. No, I must mean a lug bolt. To this day, been a feminist 35, 40 years. And the crap I hear in the atheist community among upper middle class, college educated, privileged, able bodied, white, heterosexual males. That Ann Rand guy, oh, you're acting like a victim. Dude, my genitals are mutilated. I've endured really serious sexual abuse since infancy and into adulthood. Now, exactly how are you defining victim? And why should I be in denial about the fact that I have been a victim? Do you think I made bad choices and that's how I got raped as a child? You're blaming me? I'm acting like a victim? I'm claiming that word with honor and without shame. Yes, I'm a survivor. Yes, I'm a survivor. I don't tend to be victimized by it the rest of my life. But I won't be silenced about it because that would be victimizing me. So, uh, I think the analogy with African Americans and the analogy with queers, you know, the atheists have picked up the whole queer rights, peace, love, we, where, where, where's my hand? Peace, love, we are the world. Queers should have the right to get married. Queers should be able to serve in the military. Oh, those evil Christians, tongue cluck. Oh, those evil Muslims burning and killing queer people. When it suits your agenda, you get all liberal, don't you? But when I interfere with uh, your little rape fests, your little self-hatred fests, No man, no real man would ever make jokes like that about that woman's physiology, about raping her. A real man is confident in his sexuality and his identity and doesn't have to try to prove anything by being as sick and perverted as he possibly can. A real man would have congratulated her on the book on the healing between her and her mother. I don't know if that's one or two examples, Divinity, but that's what I had to say, and it's probably all balled up because I was angry. I tried to think about it and tried to organize it, but you know what? When I saw that article this morning about that, about that girl and the way she was treated, when I saw it by Skeptic, We have got, as atheists, to synthesize the rational with the emotional. And here's why. I'm no expert on human biology or neurology, but I know this. We have different layers to the brain, and one of the most primitive one is called the, what, the reptilian brain. We need to acknowledge these parts of our brain that have been selectively um, selected for in our evolution because they still operate in us and as long as we give them as long as we ignore them and pretend they're not there as long as we give them free reign as long as we don't acknowledge that we need to learn to control them and we can't learn to control them if we pretend they're not there we will never evolve as a species past this adolescence we have nuclear weapons now so we have got to integrate the emotional with the intellectual. We've got to. That is a rational decision. Ignoring the emotional brings up this woman hatred and this queer bashing. And, and as a feminist who is atheist, 
I know that if we are not integrated, you'll call it masculine, feminine, and yin and yang, but if we are not integrated, if we are into this hyper-masculinization of, it's got to be rational, and then Thunderfoot turns around and calls a woman in a hijab a bimbo, what's rational about that? If we don't integrate the emotional with the intellectual, humanity's doomed. That's a feminist issue. It's an atheist issue.